Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 7 of the online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. Today's lecture will be on polarization of light. So the lecture outline is as follows, we will first introduce what do we mean by polarization of light and then we will go into the classification. So light can be classified into linear polarization, circular polarization or elliptical polarization. Then we will look into a little bit of more details of uh, electrical polarization and circular polarization. Also we will see the useful correlations between different polarization states. After that we will study the Stokes parameters and introduce the concept of T or S polarization and TM or P polarization. So here is a photograph of Sir George Stokes. So he was an um, Irish mathematician and physicist who developed um, a description of light that encompasses intensity as well as the state of polarization. So he also made seminal contribution to uh, wave optics, fluorescence and optical aberration. So we will also study Stokes parameters which are basically named after him. So let us introduce this topic called polarization of light. So when we talk about polarization, we are mainly concerned about the electric field direction. So you can say the electric field direction defines the polarization of light. So we all know that light is basically a transverse electromagnetic wave. So the electric and magnetic field, they oscillate in a direction which is basically transverse to the direction of propagation. So if you assume here that you know the light is propagating along Z direction, in that case the electric field is assumed to be along X. So that is orthogonal to the direction of Z. Okay? And in such case the magnetic field will be in Y direction. So how do you classify different polarizations? Okay? So a polarization of light is conventionally defined by the time variation of the tip of the electric field vector E at a fixed point in space. So that brings couple of possible states of uh, electric field polarization. Let us look into them one by one. The first one is linear. So it means if the tip of the electric field vector moves in a straight line okay, like this or this, whichever way it is a straight line, we can call this wave as linearly polarized. So here is an example. So you see that a plane wave is said to be uh, linearly polarized. So this is how the electric field vector changes with time. Okay, This is the positive cycle and this is the negative cycle. But if you draw how the electric field vector is changing on this plane, you will see it is changing linearly. Okay, So this is how the electric field vector is oscillating while it is propagating along this direction. So once again polarization only concerns about the electric field. However, in a plane wave we can also show this is the, how the magnetic field will be oriented. Okay? But polarization only bothers about the electric field direction. So electric field here oscillates along this up and down. So you can actually see that this is basically a linear polarization. The next one is circular polarization. So obviously in circular polarization, the locus of the tip is a circle. It means if you plot the trajectory of the electric field vector while it is propagating along Z direction, you will see that the electric field vector draws a circle on a particular plane. Okay? In that case, we consider this wave as circularly polarized. So here is a notation that shows that so a circularly polarized light basically consists of two perpendicular electromagnetic plane wave. Okay? And another important condition is that they should be of equal amplitude and there should be 90 degree phase difference between them. So here both in red are basically electric field. Okay? So this is one plane wave and this is another plane wave. So there are two plane waves adding up but then there is a phase difference of 90 degree. So in that case, you will see that you know this is how the electric field vector will move when the wave is propagating. So from this direction, it goes like this and like this and like this. Okay. So this is how it will 
move while it is propagating forward so this is the direction of propagation so if you are an observer if you stand here okay you will see that the wave is basically coming towards you in counter clockwise manner in that case you will call it as right circular polarization obviously if the phase difference is other way that is this wave is starting early okay in that case you will see that the vector rotates in opposite direction and that will be called as left circularly polarized okay there is another type of polarization which we call as elliptical polarization and it is obviously a special case of the circular polarization okay so where the amplitude of the two plane waves are not equal okay so obviously elliptical polarization is nothing but where the tip of the electric field vector describes an ellipse so you you will get an ellipse when this uh, vector is basically you know drawn on a particular plane so here what happens again it is basically two perpendicular waves uh, of unequal amplitude and there is a phase difference of 90 degree so that will give you elliptical polarization again when you stand here and if you see that the vector is rotating counter clockwise in that case it is a right uh, elliptical polarization so there is a convention this is a convention difference so once you look at from the source the rotation will be in one direction either clockwise or counter clockwise i will summarize it later on but here you remember that when you are standing at the, at the observer end and if you see that the electric field vector is rotating in counter clockwise direction we call it right handed okay polarization so it can be elliptical or circular depending on the amplitude if the amplitude of both plane waves are same then it is circular polarization if they are different then it is elliptical polarization but what is important is the phase difference between the two plane waves should be 90 degree okay now let's look into little bit of more details of linear polarization suppose that we arbitrarily place x and y axis and describe the electric field in terms of its component ex and ey which will be along x and y direction right so that you can do for any any electric field direction you can basically uh, take out the components along x and y direction and then you can describe any polarization state as e z t so z is the propagation direction t is the time dependence of that electric field so this any electric field polarization state can be essentially split into the two orthogonal linear polarization states ex and ey so if you write it in details it will look like e o x that is the amplitude and then there is a you know plane wave is varying so let us take cosine function to describe that we can write it as cos omega t omega is the angular frequency minus kz okay plus phi x so phi x is basically the phase with this uh, electric field component along the x direction similarly you can write for the ey you can write e o y that is this the basically amplitude or the peak amplitude okay and uh, this is cos omega t minus kz plus phi y so once again so eox and eoy are nothing but the magnitude that is the maximum amplitude you can say of ey ex and ey component and phi x and phi y are nothing but the corresponding phases now if uh, you know we have seen that the field oscillations are confined to a particular line we call that wave to be linearly polarized wave so when the field is only lying along x that means ey component is zero that in that case we call it as horizontal polarization okay or x polarization so that is zero degree you can if you you know measure the angle from x axis you will say that this is zero degree linear polarization along x axis so that is given as eoy equals zero so obviously 90 degree polarization from x axis will be along the y axis so that can be also called as vertical polarization that is 
EOX will be 0 in that case. There are other cases also possible where the polarization vector is making a 45 degree angle uh, from the x axis. Okay? In that case, EOX and EOY both components will be equal. Okay? So, in such case also, if you have the phase to be same, so you have the electric field polarization along this one. So, this is called 45 degree linear polarization. So, in linear polarization, the you know the amplitudes are same here and also the phase. There is another case which is also possible that is called diagonal case where the phase difference is integral multiple of pi. So, if that happens, you can actually have EOY which is basically minus EOX. In that case, the polarization will be along 135 degree okay? or you can say it is minus 45 degree that is in this direction. Okay? So, these are the typical cases of linear polarization. You can have linear polarization along any of this angle okay? as long as the electric field vector oscillates or dances along a straight line it will be called um, linear polarization. Now, let us look into little bit of more details of uh, circular polarization. So, here we have already discussed that E x and E y will be equal. Okay? So, these are basically two plane waves which have equal uh, magnitude or amplitude, but there is a phase difference of pi by 2 90 degree. Now, the phase difference can be plus pi by 2 or minus pi by 2 and that will decide whether it is a left handed circular polarization or right handed. So, one can be this way, another can be opposite. Okay? That way. So, in both cases as the amplitudes are equal, the electric field vector will describe a circle and that is why we call it circular polarization. So, here you, are, you can see that you know if phi y minus phi x is pi by 2, we see that the electric field vector goes in counterclockwise direction. Okay? So, this is also where you can see that it is basically going in counterclockwise direction when it is coming towards me. So, look into the screen, you stand here and you see that the wave is actually going in this direction. Okay? And this is right handed uh, circular polarization when phi y minus phi x equals minus pi by 2. Okay? So, in this case you will see that the electric field vector propagates in you know um, clockwise direction while going to the observer. Okay? So, mathematically you can see that left handed circular polarization we consider counterclockwise rotation of the electric field as it propagates along k. So, that is better. So, we take the direction of wave propagation as k. So, wave is propagating along z direction. Okay? So, we can say that the rotation is happening in counterclockwise direction. So, that is another convention. Let us stick to one particular convention so that you do not get confused. Okay? And we will write that E o x is equal to E o y. Okay? So, the amplitudes are same, but the phase difference phi y minus phi x is pi by 2 plus minus 2 m pi. It means m can be integer starting from 0, 1, 2 and dot dot dot. So, you know you can have 90 degree phase difference or 2 pi times you know integral multiple of 2 pi can be added to that. In all these cases you will get left handed circular polarization. On the other hand if you see you know the clockwise rotation of the electric field okay, along the propagation direction we can call it as right circular polarization. So, that is a easy notation. Okay. So, E o x and E o y are equal obviously, but then the phase relation phi y minus phi x should be minus pi by 2 okay? and you, you can also have plus 2 m pi. Okay? So, this is the phase relation that should be satisfied in case of right handed circular polarization. Obviously, the same thing will apply for you know elliptical polarization as well only difference that here the amplitude E o x and E o y are not same. Okay? So, I will not repeat this again. So, 
you can actually uh, use the same concept that we have seen for circular polarization you can apply for elliptical polarization just that the amplitude of the two uh, components will not be equal okay so here is an example let us take uh, you know uh, if we take this example it says show that if ex is given as a cos omega t minus kz and ey equals b cos omega t minus kz plus phi the amplitudes a and b are different and the phase difference phi is equal to pi by 2 in that case the wave is elliptically polarized so let us start doing that so ex is already given to you ex is this so let us find out what will be cos omega t minus kz so that can be written as ex over a similarly from this one phi here is already given that is pi by 2 so from this equation you can write cos omega t minus kz plus phi by 2 which can be also written as minus sin omega t minus kz and that is equal to ey over b okay so you have got cos term you have got you know sin term if you square them up and add them up so you get sin square theta plus cos, cos square theta equals 1 so this will be the equation there you put you know these values okay ex over a whole square plus ey over b whole square equals 1 so that is typically an equation for ellipse right so in this case if a and b are not equal then only it becomes a elliptical polarization right if a and b will be equal it becomes a circular polarization fine so it's a very very simple uh, thing now this we have already seen so there are different conventions people uh, follow from book to book it changes okay so it people can take it as viewed from source you know if it they, they have a perception of right circular polarization or left circular polarization when viewed from the receiver end there is one convention so we can actually take this that we can say that when seen from the receiver end okay when seen from the receiver end that is the wave is coming towards you if you see counterclockwise uh, rotation you call it right circular polarization and when seen from the source that is you are looking in the direction of the wave propagation okay that you should see clockwise rotation or clockwise rotation of the electric field that will be the right circular polarization okay so you just remember this one what happens for the right circular polarization you can obviously do it for the left one also okay now why we study polarization of light in uh, so much details because in optical communication we can actually use polarization division multiplexing if we choose two polarization states which are orthogonal to each other then the signals can actually have the same wavelength or same frequency still they will not you know pollute each other because they will be orthogonal to each other so that is why knowing the polarization of polarization state of light is very important and for that this particular sphere which is also known as point care sphere is very important so in point care sphere you can actually map the polarization of a wave to a particular unique point on this sphere and the points on the opposite side of the sphere will mark the orthogonal polarization something like say if you have this point as linear polarization like this that is zero degree linear polarization on the opposite side that is shown by the dotted line you see this is vertical polarization so this becomes horizontal polarization okay so that is nothing but plus minus 90 degree rotated okay so this will be the orthogonal polarization to zero degree polarization it can be plus 90 or minus 90 similarly if you take plus 45 degree linear polarization as one state so this is plus 45 degree from x axis so this is my x axis this is plus 45 degree so on the opposite side you will see you have minus 45 degree polarization so these two states are orthogonal to each other okay similarly if you have right circular polarized light okay the orthogonal polarization state to this will be left circular polarized light and so on 
So, this is where the point care sphere can help you find out the orthogonal states of a particular polarization. Now, let us look into some useful correlations between these different polarization. The first one is that if you take linear polarization LP means linear polarization. Okay? So, LP along x and LP along y if you add these two plane waves you get a LP along 45 degree. Okay? So, it means a linearly polarized wave can always be decomposed as sum of two orthogonal linear polarized wave that are in phase. So, this is other way. So, any polarization you can break them into x and y component. Okay? That is also possible. And if you take a x polarization, x polarization and y polarization, you get a 45 degree polarization. So, it, it actually gives you idea about both. Next thing, if you take you know one x polarized light and another y polarized light of equal amplitude and if they are 90 degree out of phase, you get circular polarized light. Now, whether they are you know plus j or it is minus j that will tell you whether it is right circularly polarized or left circularly polarized. And when you add up you know left circularly polarized light with right circularly polarized light, you add up you get linear polarization. On the other hand, you can say that a linear polarization wave can be expressed as sum of LCP wave and a RCP wave. The phase difference between the two circular polarized waves will decide the tilt of the linear polarization. If these two polarization have any phase difference, that will tell you whether it will be a 0 degree or whatever will be the degree. Okay? If they are in phase, you will get a 0 degree linear polarization. If they are 90 degree out of phase, you will get a 90 degree polarization and so on. Okay? So, the phase between the two circular polarized wave will determine the tilt of the linear polarization. So, when you have all this prescribed format of polarization, it is also possible to have unpolarized light where there is no specific direction of electric field oscillation. Those are called random polarization. Okay? So, we can say if the plane of the electric field changes its orientation randomly, but the magnitude is constant. Okay? So, it is in the same plane, the magnitude is same, it is like a circle, but it can be in any direction. Okay? In that case, we can call it as randomly polarized wave or unpolarized EM wave. So, what are the properties here? So, the plane of the electric field and also for the magnetic field will have random, you know, the plane becomes random as a function of time. Okay? So, they are random function of time. Second thing is that the probability of orientation of the electric field in any direction in the x y plane is same. So, it can actually lie in any direction and the magnitude of the electric field okay, and so of the magnetic field as well because they are anyways related. So, they are always same at any instant of time. So, this is unpolarized light. So, usually when you get light from any source that those are basically unpolarized light something if you take a LED light source you will get unpolarized light okay? and then you can use polarizer to get polarized light. Okay? Next thing we will try to study here is the Stokes parameter. Now as uh, discussed initially the Stokes parameter has to do something with the polarization as well as the intensity of the light. So, in 1852 Sir George Gabriel Stokes he observed that any polarization state of electromagnetic wave can be defined by four parameters. So, he actually figured out four parameters with which you can describe any polarization state and he named those parameters or those parameters were basically named after him as Stokes parameter. So, they are given as S0, S1, S2 and S3. So, you see S0 is basically E x 0 square plus E y 0 square that is nothing but the amplitude or magnitude square of the electric field vectors along x and y. The addition of that S 1 is basically the difference 
between the magnitude square that is basically the intensity you can say s2 is 2 ex0 e, ey0 cos phi phi is basically the phase difference between ey and ex so you can also write this as 2 twice real of this vector and multiplied by this vector that is ex multiplied by ey and s3 will be 2 ex0 ey0 sin phi okay so that can be written as 2 imaginary of this product of ex and ey so these are the four vectors which sir gabriel stokes okay figured out and with that the stokes vector can be represented now stokes vector can be represented in terms of unpolarized which we write as sn and polarized sp parts of light wave so you can say s equals sn plus sp and this is how he has defined the unpolarized part and this is how you define the polarized part so when you add them together you will see that these are the basically four stokes parameter s0 s1 s2 and s3 okay so this represents unpolarized light and this can represent any polarization of light okay so let us see the significance of the stokes parameter so as mentioned s0 gives you the total irradiance okay total means polarized plus unpolarized s1 gives you the intensity of the horizontal or vertical linear polarization okay so s1 is related to the linear polarization which are you know horizontal and vertical s2 gives you the intensity of the linearly polarized waves with an angle of plus 45 degree or minus 45 degree okay to the previous orientations okay and s3 is related to circular polarization so that way he is able to handle all the different types of polarization using these four parameters so let's take some example how it works so if you take linear polarization along x or y so you can say that s1 equals plus 1 so when you say s1 equals plus 1 it means the reflected light is horizontally polarized okay that is x polarized and when you will have s1 equals minus 1 you can say it is vertically polarized or it is y polarized on the other hand if you consider you know linear polarization with an angle of plus minus 45 degree or plus minus pi by 4 same thing you you only talk about s2 parameter okay in that case other parameters will be zero so the parameter s2 will describe the linear polarization in plus minus pi by 4 so in case in that case s2 will, can be written as plus minus 1 with respect to x direction it means s2 equals 1 will tell you it's a linear polarization of plus 48 degree minus 1 will tell you that there is a linear polarization of minus 48 degree and so on there are other terms which also can be you know extracted from stokes parameters which is ellipticity okay so ellipticity is defined as chi parameter which is the ratio of s3 over s1 and when you compute this you can either find plus 1 or minus 1 if you find plus 1 it tells you it's a left circular polarization if you find minus 1 it's a right circular polarization also you can find out what is the degree of polarization that is it it's a stokes parameter that allow you to calculate how much portion of the light wave is basically polarized okay as i told you light can have polarized as well as unpolarized components okay so degree of polarization basically quantifies how much portion of the light is polarized and you can get calculate dop as intensity of the polarized light over intensity of the total light so that you can write as intensity of total light is s0 okay and intensity of the polarized light is square root of s1 square plus s2 square plus s3 square okay and when you get one it means 
it is a fully polarized light means the entire portion of the light is polarized when you get zero it is a fully unpolarized light anything in between tells you the degree of polarization okay so the last topic of today's lecture will be regarding t and tm polarization which are also known as s and p polarization so let us try to use the labels t and tm transverse electric and transverse magnetic when we are describing the orientation of linearly polarized wave relative to a device now let us consider that the wave is basically traveling in material 1 and it is going to enter material 2 so there is a boundary so this is the interface this particular plane is basically the interface so the wave is basically incident on this interface now there are two ways the electric field vector can be polarized so if if you draw the plane of polarization so plane of polarization is basically the plane that contains the incoming radiation and the normal to the surface okay as well as the reflected radiation okay so if you draw a plane like this that is your plane of incidence so here this particular one is the plane of incidence we are not showing the reflected beam but then reflected beam will also lie in this plane of incidence now in this plane of incidence when the wave is impinging in this way the electric field vector has got two choices okay either it can be polarized along the plane of incidence or we can say parallel to the plane of incidence that is why it is called p p stands for parallel okay in that case we call it as tm polarization the other choice is that the electric field vector can be striking out of this plane so we can call it as perpendicular polarization or s polarization or that is also known as te polarization just to you know tell it with more so when details so s polarization stands for sticks up okay or sticks out okay like this so you have incident light this is the interface so this screen becomes the screen becomes my plane of incidence so incident light is falling in this way it is getting reflected some part is getting transmitted so in this case what is happening the electric field is in and out of this particular screen okay so this one we will call as s polarization okay and the other possibility is that when the electric field or any plane wave is falling in this direction getting reflected here some part is getting transmitted the electric field polarization can be along the plane of the incidence that is along this particular screen so in that case you see that the uh, upon reflection there is a change in the polarization polarization angle so this particular case is called p polarization or parallel polarization because the electric field is parallel to the plane of incidence this one is called s polarization because it sticks up out of the plane of polarization so with this basic concepts here we will um, stop today and in the next lecture we will study more about reflection and transmission and in introduce the Fresnel equations to you so any questions you can drop me an email to this email address deb.shikdar at uh, iitg.ac.in so with that i'll stop here thank you mm -hmm.